Hey everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson, your local technical consultant with Altium, and today we are gonna be continuing with our little demo for a four layer board to show you how to actually go about getting started with the design. In the last installment of this little mini series, we actually created some uh, impedance profiles and we created the layer stack, basically got ourselves primed to transfer everything from the schematics into the layout. Now we're gonna actually do that transfer. We're gonna make sure we can get all the components into the layout, and then we're gonna look at some strategies for actually placing everything in the layout and getting ready to actually make sure that we can solve the layout. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's go ahead and get started. I am back in the project here in Altium Designer. Um, just to remind everyone of where we were at, let me open up the PCB. I'm gonna go into the Layer Stack Manager and kind of just refresh everybody's memory. We had the, the stack up that we created, and if we go over to the Impedance tab, you can see that we've got our Impedance Profile created. This is a coplanar example here. So we're gonna do everything coplanar. So we just need to think about that when we're doing placement and uh, just keep that in mind once everything's in the PCB layout. So before we do anything, obviously, we gotta get the components in here. First thing that we're gonna do is we kinda can do this all at once with all the different schematics, or we can kinda go sheet by sheet. Now, personally, I like to do things sheet by sheet uh, just because it helps me keep things organized. Also because, you know, here there's like one component that's really like the central main processor for this system, and I'd like to import it first and get it placed and then kind of start to worry about some of the peripherals. So if you were smart about the way you created your schematics, you can, you can do that. And you can basically go one schematic at a time into the PCB layout. To do that, I'm just gonna do design, update, and normally what I will do is validate changes. And check this out. All of these footprints are not found. What are we gonna do about that? So that is something that we have to correct first before we can transfer anything into the PCB layout. Now, thankfully, I was actually able to export some of the important libraries and then I can add these into the project. So I can just drag these over here and you'll see that they open up. But if I go back over here to the projects tab, I can just take these, I can drag them into my project. So now the libraries exist in the project. Now what do we do? We have all of these components and none of them uh, are assigned to a footprint or none of them have a footprint assigned to them. How can we really quickly correct that? All of these components, except for like one or two, uh, are basically have all of their CAD data in these two libraries. So like if I go over here, you can start to see where all the different part numbers are. All of these components were, remember, created from an earlier project and we had to import the library in order to you know, find the components. So one thing that you can do is, if you know that all of the components that uh, are in this sheet or in this one library, what you can do is just basically select everything. And then I'm gonna go over here to source and I'm gonna click my new library, okay? And just go ahead and click that. Click do not change and there we go. Okay, so now that we've got the library set for these different components, you can see it's, it's set right here. We can go back in and we can hit design update PCB document. Now, if I hit validate changes, you'll notice that some of these are still missing. That's because these reference designators are actually in a different sheet. So if you wanna go back and change that now, you can. I don't have to because right now I'm just worried about importing everything in this sheet into the PCB layout. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for now. Just hit execute changes. The ones that don't work obviously aren't going to get imported. And then here you can see when we get over here to the PCB layout, we've got a whole bunch of stuff and it is just all over the place. The reason I normally will do this first, just do the import real quick, is because sometimes, as you notice here on, on J12, as soon as you import a component, there will be a design rule error. So let me just zoom in here and we can kind of look at this. So what is this design rule error that we're seeing? Well, if I then put my cursor right here, you'll see we immediately have a clearance constraint on this particular component. Now, what component is this? 
we can go to 3D, we can actually look at it. You can see that this is a standard 10 pin header. So this would be your programming header that you would use. You would hook this up to uh, maybe like an SPI programmer, or you would hook it up to the evaluation board, or if you had like a USB programmer that had uh, one of these, these uh, pin header outputs, you would hook it up to that. And basically this would be what you would use to, to program the board. So just going back here uh, into 2D, for this component, I know that I'm gonna Im immediately need to change a clearance constraint once I create the design rules. So most people will tell you, hey, you should create the design rules before you import anything. You can do the import first and just check to see if this happens and then immediately change the design rules from there. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now, is look at the design rules that I need to set. I'm gonna go into design and then rules. And now we can basically go through and make sure that we've set everything that we need to set to ensure fabrication capability and assembly capability. And then also, now we can set a design rule for the impedance profile that we created previously. Let's do the impedance profile first, just because I know that uh, I'm gonna need to do it at some point. You would wanna set this to a specific net, and then as you you know kind of scroll through here, you'll immediately know that, hey, I've got a whole bunch of nets in here. Which net do I need to set this on? So if you go back into the schematic, uh, you'll notice here I've got actually a few different nets, right? I've got my ATX, ARX, and then my RFBG, okay? And then those go over here to this uh, schematic here. And then you can see the net names, are, or you can see the, uh, the nets are reflected here uh, in this portion of the schematic. So uh, let's go back over here to the PCB layout, go over to rules, and first things first, I'm gonna check the imp use impedance profile box and SC50 is the only one that exists. You know, you may have more than one, but you wanna check that. And here you can immediately see we have ATX and ARX. And if we scroll down, we'll eventually find RFBG. So I'm just gonna set this to RFBG. I can call this uh, width, uh, we'll just call it uh, RF out. And if I wanted to, I could then create new ones that may have different impedance profiles for the other control impedance lines. And we have that now all set up and we're basically good to go. I'm just gonna do it on the RFBG for now to save some time, but you can do the same thing for the Bluetooth lines. Next, we have that clearance issue between the, uh, the holes uh, on J12. So that's another thing I'm gonna wanna check. Now, you know, this clearance issue you'll notice is between, if you zoom in here, you can actually see this. It's between the pad edge here that makes up this through hole that is gonna be used to mount the component. That is the clearance constraint that we wanna check. Now, if I go over down here and I just scroll over here to top solder and I go to single layer mode, you'll actually be able to, you know, clear out all the other stuff in the layout and zoom in here, there's actually gonna be a really small uh, uh, solder mask sliver here. And one of the reasons for that is because if I just enable you know, pad and via, my solder mask expansion by default is set to four mils. So that's fine for most through holes that are gonna have pretty big pitch between the pins. This is actually a smaller connector and that's one of the reasons that it triggers this design rule. So four mils may not be appropriate for this particular component. We could set this to zero and same thing here, we set it to zero. So we could actually do this for all the pads. And you know, you don't have to do it right this second. Um, you could set that in the design rule also. Um, you could do it just for that pad if you wanted to. But we can change that if we want here in the mask rule. You can go over here to solder mask expansion. You'll see by default, it just sets this to four mils. I usually just set it to zero mils. Um, again, this is, you know, the default is set to four. Uh, that's usually a little too big because it kind of creates those problems like that. Um, and then I'll hit apply. Now clearances, we want to clear out that one clearance rule uh, that is creating this design rule error here. So we have a through hole pad to through hole pad violation here. Now by default, everything is set to 10 here except for this bottom row. What I'm going to do is just as an example, I'm going to change this to eight mils and then I'm gonna hit apply and hit okay. And then you'll see immediately all of this stuff in this footprint got corrected and changed, okay? So 
This is a really quick way to just clear out any of those simple errors. And you know, the value that we set here in the design rules for through hole to through hole clearance of eight mils, that is totally within fabrication capabilities of pretty much every fabricator on the planet. So that is something that you can comfortably set. Now, the other clearances by default set to 10 mils, maybe that's gonna be a little too conservative in your design. It just depends what you're trying to do. If you know you're gonna have to put uh, like pads and vias close together because the, the layout is gonna be very dense, you would wanna make sure that you get the SMD to, to pad or the SMD pad to via limit or the SMD pad to copper limit or the track to copper limits from your fabricator. So that's something that you can look up on their website and you don't need to fill in every single box here. You just need to fill in the really critical ones, okay? And it's usually gonna be three or four, and I mentioned some of them, like track to pad, track to copper, whatever it may be. Just fill in those because that's gonna satisfy a lot of the design rules that you need to hit. And once you do that, just go ahead and hit okay. And then at this point, we're gonna be pretty much ready to work with the layout. We've got one other component here that has a clearance constraint. Um, let's see what this is. So here it says, so 7.87 mil less than 10 mil between pad on top layer and pad on top layer. So this is another pad to pad clearance constraint. So we can go ahead and do the same thing with SMD pads uh, in the design rules. Um, the other thing we could do is if we just look at here in the top layer, you can see that it's actually doing a little bit of a solder mask expansion. I wonder if that is also the problem too. So you can go through the same process, but as you set those design rules, it's gonna clear out those errors automatically in those footprints, and um, you'll be good to go uh, doing everything in the layout. After you set the design rules, you're gonna be clear to then start arranging components. I'm gonna go through and just kind of talk briefly about what the strategy would be to start arranging some of the components. And there are a few places I usually like to start. Usually, you know, working on client designs, uh, the client will tell me like, we need to have uh, certain elements in certain places on the board. Perfect example is connectors. Like we wanna have a connector down here at this bottom edge and we wanna have this connector at the top edge. That's usually for like a power connection and an, and an IO connection. Totally reasonable. That kind of stuff you wanna hit first and you wanna get that locked in place and then you can worry about placing the rest of the stuff in the layout so that it can actually be solved. Since we have a central processor here and that processor has an RF line associated with it, I actually wanna place that first and I wanna at least get the location and orientation set uh, so that I know where it's gonna sit on the board. And so to do that, I just wanna zoom in and I wanna look briefly at the schematic. Actually here I can see the net name so I don't really need to look at the schematic, but if you were in the schematic, you would notice that the pin name is RFBG, okay? And so you can see it right here, it's pin 31. And if I was gonna put like the antenna, let's say over here on the right, then what I would wanna do is actually rotate this bad boy so that RFBG is right here on the right facing the location where the antenna is gonna be at. So what the plan would be here is to just route this straight over to the right, over to the antenna in this region of the layout. So that's one way to think about how you wanna place the component and where you wanna orient it. Before you go and do a bunch of placement, now I just kind of did this initially just as like my thought process of how I'm gonna go and approach this layout. But once you have some of those ideas in mind of where you're gonna place the critical stuff, what's next? We want to define the board shape, okay? So here what we see, this big black uh, region, this is just your default board. What we'd actually want to do is hit one, and then from here, we're in board uh, editing mode, and we can edit the board shape here uh, from inside here. So we can go to modify board shape. Um, I can basically you know, draw out the shape that I want. Um, there are other ways to do it. So uh, we'll actually link to a video uh, in the description that shows you a bit more how to use the board shape tool. And that little tutorial will show you some of the features that you can use to actually define the board shape yourself. And you can actually get really creative with it. You can do circular stuff. You can do kind of cool curved stuff. You can pretty much program whatever you want in into the CAD tool. Obviously, you wanna make sure that it can actually be manufactured. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're creating your board shape. Once you do that, you're ready to start doing the actual layout. So 
That's gonna be a topic for another video because we're running low on time here. This is just the second part in this series. We're gonna do, I think, one more part that shows uh, some of the particulars of component placement. You know, I kind of alluded to some of the stuff in this video, but you gotta do that board shape first, then we can worry about component placement. So if you like this video, hit that like button. If you wanna see the next video in the series, as well as all of our other great videos, hit that subscribe button and definitely leave your comments and questions in the comments section. We love getting your comments and questions. If you know the email address, you can also email your questions to us at youtube at allteam.com. We love getting your questions and we've been a little inundated lately, so I will do my best to get to them. If you wanna get something answered quick, throw it in the comments section and I will do my best to get to it soon. Thank you very much everybody for watching and definitely, definitely don't forget to call your fabricator.